Lawyer. I protect musicians and music professionals from bad deals and poor career choices. You can visit my website at themusicindustrylawyer.com. So as I told you previously, today songwriters got screwed. And they got screwed because of the Department of Justice's recent ruling on the performance rights organization consent decrees. So I'm going to take a couple minutes and explain to you what's going on and then what you can do to take a stand. So the performance rights organizations, which collect and distribute royalties for the public performance of compositions here in the U.S. are ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and Global Music Rights. ASCAP and BMI are nonprofit organizations and are regulated by government consent decrees that regulate the fees that they can charge and prevent them from becoming monopolies and also encourage competition between them. The consent decrees were written before the internet, streaming, digital, any of these things were contemplated. So in recent years, there have been lobbying efforts to reform and update these consent decrees to modern times and modern practices. The hope was to get rates for songwriters and composition owners, like the music publishers, increased so that music creators could be more fairly compensated for their work and use of their work, and also to help content owners earn more money from online music and digital streams. Unfortunately, the Department of Justice decided to not update the consent decrees, but not only not update them, to put into place something called 100% licensing. Now, in practice, when there are co-writers on a song and maybe some of those co-writers are with one performance rights organization and other co-writers are with other performance rights organizations, someone who wanted to use that music, perform that music, would have to go to all the performance rights organizations that owned a portion of the music that the user wanted to use and get licenses from all those performance rights organizations. This is called fractional licensing and this is how the music industry operates in practice. Now with this practice of 100% licensing that the Department of Justice has implemented, any owner of a composition, even if they own 1% of the composition, can license 100% of the composition. And then they have the duty to pay the other co-writers their share of the royalty. This creates a big problem because it enables licensees, music users, to shop for the lowest license fee that is being offered. So not only will they go with whoever is offering the lowest licensing fee, and then that low licensing fee will be split amongst co-writers and co-owners of the song. It also creates a problem as far as that one owner accounting to all the other owners because a lot of times people have written a song together and they're not necessarily in touch. They're not necessarily communicating and teaming up as to what should we charge for this license. So it creates a big communication problem. It creates a big problem as far as people getting paid and it creates a big problem as far as music creators getting paid less than what they should. The other aspect of the DOJ's decision involves something called partial withdrawal. Now typically music publishers could use the services of performance rights organizations for certain aspects but they could opt out in certain areas and make direct deals such as with digital service providers. This would allow them to negotiate a higher rate directly with the digital service provider or whoever they were negotiating with. Now the DOJ says that music publishers need to be either all in with PROs or all out. So the PROs either need to handle everything for the music publisher on the performance side or nothing. And if it's nothing, that means whoever wants to use compositions 
owned by a certain publisher will have to go directly to that publisher. Well, there's a lot of licensees like bars, restaurants, especially small establishments that are not going to know to go to that publisher. So that means they're going to be playing that music. It's not going to be licensed under a blanket license with a performance rights organization. And chances are the owners of those compositions are not going to get paid. So not only does this decrease the already narrowing income streams for songwriters, for publishers, for music creators, but it actually inhibits the growth of the music industry in the digital age. It inhibits creators from getting paid fairly for their work. In the internet age and after Napster, people got really used to listening to music for free, getting music for free, not paying for music. And this has been spreading slowly or quickly, depending on which part of the industry you're in, but it's been spreading through all parts of the music industry, from performance to sync licensing to consumers listening to music. And it's really, really important to value music because songwriters, artists, the owners of the content and the creators need to be able to make a living off their work or they will not have a career in music. So what can you do? As a music consumer, you can pay for the music that you consume. If you own an establishment that uses music, make sure that you have the proper licenses and that you are paying for all the music that is performed in your establishment. And what everyone should do is go to the website standwithsongwriters.org and I've put a link in the description.